EJ, a lot of talking about these new rule changes. What can you tell us about the hip drop tackle, a ban of the hip drop tackle, and a change to the coaches' challenge rules? The vote was unanimous from the competition committee. The NFL released a bunch of brand new rule changes today, and this one rule change in particular could absolutely decimate the NFL. Some fans are even saying that tackle football is about to turn into flag football as a result of this. You might see a bunch of 2,000 yard receiving and even rushing seasons as a result of this. So before we get to the content, make sure you drop like, subscribe, and turn on our notifications to help the channel grow. Now that we get all that out of the way, work! Today's video is sponsored by a company that's made life so much easier for me. You see, between spending time with my family, running this YouTube channel, and maintaining an active lifestyle, I find it very difficult to source premium ingredients for whenever I want to cook. But Good Chop makes all of that easy. Good Chop offers fully customizable boxes of high quality meat and seafood delivered to your door on your schedule. The products are vacuum sealed and flash frozen at peak freshness so you can stock your freezer and cook when you want. You can stop wasting your time searching for quality cuts that could be overpriced because Good Chop's price per meal starts at $3.74. They have over 60 plus high quality cuts of protein from grass-fed ribeye, USDA prime filet mignon, my personal favorite, the wild-caught salmon, free-range and organic chicken breasts, chicken wings, pork tenderloin, and thick-cut bacon, just to name a few. Most importantly, there's no antibiotics or added hormones ever, and no artificial ingredients, only the good stuff. My personal favorite of this batch is the wild-caught sockeye salmon. The color on it is so beautiful. And after adding some butter and some of my own seasoning to it, it literally melted in my mouth. Good Chop sources only the good stuff, which is why they feel confident about their 100% money back guarantee. Good Chop or get your money back. And we're so confident you're gonna love Good Chop that they're giving us a huge discount. Just go to goodchop.com slash YouTube and use my promo code microphone120 to get $120 off of your first four boxes of Good Chop. That's goodchop.com slash YouTube and the code microphone120, or just click in the link in the description down below to get $120 off of your first four boxes of Good Chop. And thank you, Good Chop, for the sponsor. Mic check 1212. What's going on, everybody? During every single offseason, the NFL Rules Committee gets together to determine whether or not any necessary changes need to be made to the game of football. And in some years, they implement some cool rule changes, and in other years, they might not do much at all. My favorite year was when they implemented the ability to challenge pass interference penalties just because of what happened to the New Orleans Saints in the NFC Championship game versus the Los Angeles Rams back in 2018. But in this year, there were a bunch of questions in regards to the rules of football. For one, is the tush push going to be a legal thing? Are we going to allow the tush push to remain a play in the NFL? And for the most part, it seems like, yes, the tush push is going to be made legal. But the biggest question to the game of football, something that could completely alter the game of football has to do with the hip drop tackle. Now, the hip drop tackle is the culprit for a bunch of injuries over the past year. And as a Dallas Cowboy fan, it's kind of near and dear to my heart because during the Dallas Cowboys annual slaughtering at the hands of the San Francisco 49ers in 2023 was when Tony Pollard went down at the hands of a hip drop tackle. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh my God, the 49ers cheated. And that's the reason the Cowboys season ended. But I will admit that that if this tackle had not been made on Tony Pollard, then we may have had a fighting chance. Maybe our season wouldn't end like this. But then again, we're the Dallas Cowboys and we always find a way to embarrass ourselves. Okay, your definition of what is all in and mine might not be the same thing, but I'm trying to win the games this year with my decision. Which by the way, we're working on a video on why the Dallas Cowboys are absolutely over the next two years. Make sure you keep an eye out on that. With that being said, the NFL didn't really make that many alterations to the rules at the time. And the hip drop tackle didn't really become a thing until this past year when Geno Smith complained about it, when he got tackled via a hip drop tackle, or when Mark Andrews' entire season came to a conclusion, at least until he reappeared in the playoffs, as a result of an injury he suffered from a hip drop tackle. The moment this happened, there were questions about whether or not this tackle should be banned from the 
the game. Now, it's not as black and white as you think. It's not like this tackle bad, therefore we should cancel it. Because at the same time, you have to understand that when you get to the bigger players of the NFL, players like Derrick Henry or Travis Kelsey or George Kittle or AJ Brown or any large physically imposing individual that you need to tackle, you might not have a choice but to do a hip drop tackle. And at the same time, when you learn the game of football as a defensive back or a linebacker, you learn to tackle in a particular way. You've been practicing the way you tackle for decades at this point. You're so good at the way that you tackle that you made it into the NFL. So just walking up one day and saying a particular tackle is banned is going to make things very complicated. And look no further than Kareem Jackson this past year, who quite literally got banned from the NFL as a result of the level of physicality he played the game with. The man can't control himself. He's been playing football the same way for decades. And now that he is 35 years old and they're completely changing the way that you're supposed to play defense, he no longer can hold up anymore. Now he got claimed off of waivers for the Houston Texans, but I wouldn't be surprised if Kareem Jackson is no longer an effective player, which to be honest, isn't the worst thing considering how he's been in the NFL since 2010. He's had an awesome run. With that being said, the NFL made their decision and it's a decision that pissed off a lot of fans, completely banning the hip drop tackle. And there are multiple issues with this. Kyle Rudolph gives you a reason why this could decimate the game of football on the Up and Adam show. I just think it's too hard, you know, like defenders have done a great job in, you know, having a target now. You know, they talk about that strike zone for DBs when they're coming in to make a play on a defenseless receiver. The, the hit drop tackle, I just think it's it's too hard in the heat of the moment to be like, oh no, I can't tackle that guy like this anymore. Um, I think it's too hard to officiate. I think it's going to be one of those things like the year we had the pass interference being reviewed. I remember like we're, we were playing a game in Green Bay that year. We scored a touchdown to Dalvin and then all of a sudden it was a scoring place. So it was reviewed. And then they said Diggs had offensive pass interference and he had absolutely nothing to do with the play. So to me, this like hip drop tackle seems like it's, it's not, it's not black and white. There's this like fine area and how, how do you officiate it? How do you find it? Um, so I, I think that's the biggest problem. Obviously, I understand why the NFL wants that tackle to be eliminated. Mm -hmm. and, and quite honestly, it's more just about how about we, we go back to coaching fundamentals of tackling. Um, let's emphasize that as opposed to, you know, trying to find guys and eliminate a certain tackle because it's not safe. So uh, I just think it's going to be really hard to police. Like, how are you going to enforce it? Yeah, there's just, it's tough. I don't know, stay off the, Twitter. The defensive guys, I'm glad I was on offense. They have it hard enough as it is. You know, obviously a lot of the rules <laughs> are, are designed for us to score points. Uh, that's what fans want to see. You see all these quarterbacks, receivers. Uh, now the tight ends, love seeing the tight ends making a bunch of money. Um, they want those guys on the field. You, um, so they're going to do everything they I can. I love the compassion, them. the empathy you have for the defensive <laughs> players. They have it so hard. We had it better as is. It's incredible. Now, I want to make a key point here because Ian Rappaport incorrectly said that the hip drop tackle has been banned and that the competition committee was unanimous on it, which led to a lot of people getting upset, saying NFL refs currently struggle to call roughing the passer correctly. They damn sure will ruin the game with calling hip drop tackles. This rule change will be more subjective nonsense that is going to controversially cause league disfavored teams games. And then of course, flag football within 10 years. JJ Watt even said, just fast forward to the belts with flags on them. But the truth is, there's just a type of hip drop tackle being banned, saying that Rich McKay is being very clear that the hip drop tackle is not being banned, but the swivel hip drop tackle, where the defender jumps in the air and then drops on the runner's legs from behind. They reviewed 20,000 plays and they found that this play increased injury rate by 20%. Now, Tom Pelissaro indicates the real problem with the hip drop tackle, and it's the fact that referees don't really know what a hip drop tackle is. It's a very ambiguous type of tackle. That I know it passed, they said unanimously, but I, I spoke to some teams that weren't in favor of this. And I just think it's the league's continuing efforts make what's an unsafe sport a little bit safer or to try to make it safer. If you want the real truth about what's going on, I don't think the NFL gives a shit. 
about whether or not players are getting injured. Players get injured all the time. The NFL is a very physical game. And yes, you should do whatever you can to protect the players of these games. But I don't think that's the reason they're banning this type of tackle. The truth is, is they're banning this type of tackle because they want an increase in scoring because scoring makes the games more exciting. So they're handicapping defense as much as they can. And this is just the latest way of doing it. The first way that they did it was the roughing the passer penalties. And now they're just making it much more difficult to tackle opposing players. So Howie Roseman looks like a genius now for signing Saquon Barkley. The Baltimore Ravens are about to go nuclear with Derrick Henry, and it's gonna be more difficult than ever to determine what a fair and legitimate tackle is. At the end of the day, what do I think about this? I just think the NFL wants to increase scoring, and that's about it. I don't think they're trying to protect the players, and a part of me worries that this is just gonna be another one of those things that referees won't be able to call correctly. That's gonna result in more ref ball and BS flags that we don't agree with. That's gonna result in more fans thinking that the NFL games are rigged. But let me know in the comment section down below what do you guys think about all this? Are you for the hip drop tackle being banned? Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike. I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.